Thanksgiving today. We're also going to be uh, taking up our uh, Building to Grow offerings and, and commitment today. This is a special day. I mean, this is a day we've been waiting for over the last six weeks. We've been leading up to this. We've been praying about it. We've been uh, talking about it. We've been thinking about it. And uh, so today is the day that we're here. And so if you're a guest here today, just want to say, you know, no pressure. Don't you don't need to take any part of this. Just uh, hear the message and just take what God has for you this morning from his word. As uh, This is a special day for us. This is a six and a half year journey to get to this point to now where we uh, start setting some money aside for our new building that, uh, that we'll have someday by God's grace. So what is uh, our, our response to Thanksgiving? Our response to Thanksgiving is giving, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to be giving in a special way for the, uh, for the offering. And you know, it's all response to the gospel, to the good news. That's the way our lives are lived out. We give to the Lord because of what he's already given to us. See, we, we usually think that we need to give to God. We need to earn God's favor. We need to earn our way to heaven. We need to earn our way into relationship with him and into his family. But that's backwards. It's really the other way around. It's because God came to us. God sent his only son when we were in our desperate plight of sin and separation from him. And by his grace, he saves us. And so we turn to him in faith. We put our trust in him, saves us from eternal hell, and we get eternal life and we get the Holy Spirit, and we get to walk with Him. And so that's the good news, and that's why we give. We give out of gratitude, and that's what we're doing this morning. So we're going to celebrate that in this way. Now, it seems like in Thanksgiving over the years that we've kind of lost the reason for Thanksgiving. Okay, we've got a lot of different things we do on Thanksgiving. Okay, we've got the football game. We've got turkey. Okay, we, we've got, you know, just the preparation. We've got the friends and the family and the getting together but a lot of times we forget the thanksgiving part what it's all about and in order to give thanks you have to give thanks to someone and you have to give thanks to the ultimate god i mean if you if you don't have him you don't really have a reason to give thanks give thanks to random chance no you can't do it. You give thanks to god and that's what we're doing this week and that's what we're going to be doing this morning so i want to give you four ways to practice thanksgiving we're actually going to do some practicing this morning and then i'm encouraging you to practice them this week and uh, even especially on thanksgiving day this week and so the four ways that we're going to look at this morning to give thanks to god are first by singing to him and then by praying to him and then giving to him and then sharing a testimony about him all right so singing and praying and giving and then sharing a testimony about him so let's take a look first of all about giving thanks to god giving thanks to god by singing about him let's look at psalm 147 psalm 147 verse uh, 7 sing to the lord with thanksgiving make melody to our god on the lyre so Again, it's uh, Thanksgiving and singing goes together. If you, we have thankful hearts, it comes out in song. It comes out in music. It comes out with emotion. Look at what it says in Psalm 100, what we read this morning. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his and we are his people and the sheep of his pasture enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise give thanks to him bless his name for the lord is good his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations you see how he talks about giving thanks and that how music how singing is an important way and a very important way for us to give thanks to him is through through song because song and singing, what it does is it brings out the emotion. And it connects, you know, both the right and the left side of the brain. And it brings out just the, the parts of our cells that we often don't get in touch with. And it's, it's powerful. It's really, really important that we sing. And it brings us into God's presence. Have you ever been here at Oak Creek and been singing and actually feel goosebumps on, on your arms? And you, you feel that in, inside just even your chest. You just feel... 
God, you feel the movement, you feel him, his spirit working. I mean, that's what music does. And that's so, so important for us to sing and give thanksgiving to him. You say, Mike, but I can't, I can't sing. Well, the good news is the Bible just says, make a joyful noise. All right? I know some of us, you know, some of us are prison singers, okay? We're always a few bars behind and we don't have the right key. You know, I, I, underst I understand. Prison singers, all right? I'm, I'm, I'm one of them, you know. When, when I was a, a camp counselor, we had a choir. And so the, the president of the camp said, okay, I want to just make sure that everyone in here can sing. Not all of you are going to sing. Some of you are going to lip sync. But I'm gonna, we're going to give you a test. And I'm gonna, we're going to sing a song, and I'm going to go by each person. I'm going to listen to their singing and put my hand on your head. Okay, and then if I don't want you to sing, I'm going to press down on your head, okay, and push down like this, okay? So no one's going to know whose lip has to lip sync. So, of course, it came by, and I, I started laughing as he got by me because I knew what was coming. And, uh, man, he left a bruise on my head. I mean, it was, like, so big. But, but just make a joyful noise. We allow everyone to sing here on Sunday morning. We will not go by and put our hands on your head because God says just make a joyful noise. I should have quoted that verse to him come to think of it. But uh, just make a joyful noise because it's what's in our heart and what God has done in our lives that we're, that we're singing about. Now some people say, you know what, I, I'm just really not into the singing. I just like the message. You know, I just like the sermon, I like the preaching, so I'll just come late and I won't get to the, to the singing part. But I'm, let me tell you, you're, you're cheating yourself. You are you're not using one of the most important parts of our, of our lives to express your thanks through singing. So, so that is an important part, and we need to be, be here even for, for the singing part of the service. Now, you know, sometimes you don't feel like singing, right? Sometimes you just don't feel like it. Well, let me just encourage you just to be singing any, anyway and start singing praises to God. It's a great thing today is we have radio. We have radio stations. You can turn on radio. You might, you might feel angry. The guy just cut you off. You're mad. Turn on that station. Turn on, you know, the 89.3 to 103.7. Uh, KHCB was 105.3. You know, you've got so many different great radio stations. Turn it on and listen to it and let song. Let it fill up your heart and your soul and sing to him. It's so important. You've got to have good music in your life. Singing and making melody in your heart. To the Lord. Uh, we, we just need that so much. Now, we're going we're gonna to do a little practice this morning. We're going to th sing together some uh, Thanksgiving songs. I'm going to call up the, the worship team. Come on up here and let's, let's just practice this. Let's celebrate. Let's sing together. Let's sing some Thanksgiving. And I just want you this morning, just give it your 100%. Give it your all. And let's just sing it out really focus on God. Let's give thanksgiving to him. And even better, I'm not going to sing. I'm going to let these guys do it. So let's, let's sing and praise the Lord. You have to sing too. Yeah. 
there. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. <laughs> All right, well, you can be seated. So that's one very important way that we worship God is through song and through singing. Now, the second way is by praying. And praying, obviously, is immensely important. Uh, we're going to read Psalm 105 and how the psalmist uh, reflects on the Lord's uh, miracles in the, in the history of Israel. So Psalm 105, it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. So he's looking back on the history of Israel, he's looking back on the miracles, looking back and remembering how God took them through the Red Sea, how God provided for them in the desert, seeing the, the wonders that he has done, that he is the source of miracles, and he's saying, let's pray, let's call on his name, call on the Lord's name, and give thanks to him, and tell him what we're, we're thankful for. Now just imagine if you had a spouse, had a you know, parent, had brothers and sisters, had a boss that never, ever, ever told you thank you. You never heard one time thank you. You never heard any words of gratitude, any kind of praise, anything like that. And it went on for years and years and years. I mean, that would get kind of old and that would kind of get depressing. Would it not? Same way with God. Think about God, how there he is. He's given us everything that we have, every breath that we're, we're breathing right now, every heartbeat that we have, any kind of health that we have, that we walked in here, that we got here this morning, that we had food this morning. It all comes from him. So he deserves praise and thanks all throughout the day. And we need to pray and we need to tell him that because he's so gracious and he's so good to us. Now we really need to do this in times of stress. Anyone here ever have stress? All right, a few, hey, a few of you do it. Yeah, so we have times of stress. So what do you do in times of stress? That's the trigger to pray. When you feel that tightness in your chest, when you feel that sinking feeling in your stomach, when you clam up, all those things of stress, that should be a trigger in your, your mind to pray. Look what Paul says. The Apostle Paul. Now, remember when he is saying this, what time he is saying this. He's saying this in a prison, in a dungeon, handcuffed probably to a Roman soldier next to him. And so let's look at Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7. And he says this to the Philippians that he's writing to. He says, Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now this is an amazing, amazing few verses of scripture. And it is so true that when you're feeling times of stress, when you don't know what to do, you don't know how to solve a problem, you take it to him in prayer. I was thinking about the other day when my wife um, needed to go to the rehab center to help my mother-in-law out because it seemed like the doctors weren't giving her the care that she needed. She needed to get a prescription from a doctor and whatever lack of communication, there was some kind of problem. And, and so she was stressed out about it and I said, okay, let's pray. And so we prayed about it together. And she goes to, to go there, to go to the, the rehab center. She happens to run into our neighbor. Our neighbor says, hey, I'll go with you. Okay, so the neighbor goes with her. The neighbor actually ends up knowing the doctor. She ends up calling the doctor. This is like on a Sunday. And the doctor is like, oh, really? I didn't know this was going on. Let me get that taken care of. And there it was. It was taken care of within a matter of an hour. So prayer. When you feel that stress, when you don't know what to do, obviously we got to take it to him in prayer. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. So stress, you pray. But also when you pray, you, we want to pray specifically. We can pray, Lord, thank you for everything. Amen. Lord, bless me. Amen. Okay. And those are good prayers. Those are okay prayers. 
but even better is when you pray specifically, you get into the details, and you tell God about it, because remember, he knows even when the sparrow falls, he knows every hair on your head, so we need to give him the details of what we're asking for. Look what Jesus says here in Matthew 7, 7. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. And the one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks, it will be open. Or which one of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, you also do them, for this is the law and the prophets. And so he's saying, look, come into my door and knock, 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 and ask. Ask for a fish, ask for bread, ask for things that are specific, because I'm your heavenly Father, and I want to meet those needs for you specifically. So pray for those things. Now, God, we know from Scripture, many times he answers yes. Sometimes he answers no. Sometimes he says, wait, just hold. I'll get to you in a little while with that answer. Now, and there's, all, there's good reasons for that. It's for his will to be done, for our, our good, for the best to come about in our lives. And so we just have to pray. Just pray specifically and, and list those things out. Think about how Jesus prayed when he was about ready to go to the cross. He prayed for this cup to be taken away. If possible, for this cup to be taken away, it was specific. Now the Lord, the Father, said, no, this is not, this is not what we're going to be doing because you've got to go to the cross. And I think Jesus just in his emotion is pouring this out. But he knows that's where he's going. So he prays specifically. So are you praying specific? Um, he shows us how to do that in, in his word. Now, also, let's be specific in our thanksgiving. When we give thanks to God, let's be specific in the things that he has blessed us with and thank him for those, those things. So remember, just not thank you, Lord, for everything. Thank you for this whole world. But be really specific. Make a list of things that you are thankful for and write them down and share them with the Lord. And we're going to give you a chance now to, to practice this, uh, this right now. So if you would, in your program there, you should have a card called a Connection Card. And actually today we want, to, we want to ask everyone to, even if you're a regular here, at least put your name and your email address. And then on the back, there's, it'll say comments and specific prayer requests. So I'm going to give you just a couple of minutes here to fill that out and then just write three, four, five things that you are grateful for. If you do have a prayer request, put that there too, and, and we'll pray for that during the week. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to do that now, and then when it comes time for the Lord's Supper, when you come on up and go to take the bread or the, the juice, you can set that on the communion table as a way of saying, God, this is... I'm so grateful for. I'm so thankful for these things. So let's practice those things right now and spend a few minutes doing that.
So first of all, we sing to him. Second of all, we pray to him to give our thanks. And third is giving. Giving to him. Giving back to what a portion of what he has given to us. Hundreds of years before Christ, the psalmist wrote about thanksgiving to God in Psalm 50, verse 14. It says, Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and perform your vows to the Most High. So Asaph is writing this. He's writing about giving thanks to God. He talks about giving sacrifices to God. Now think about it. If you had to give thanks to God, and the way you did it is, or one of the ways that you did it is that you took a ram, you took a goat, you took a lamb, and you brought that to be sacrificed. Are you glad to be in the New Testament, in the New Covenant, to give thanks in the way that we do now? Look at what it says in Hebrews 13, 15 through 16. This is how we give thanks now. He says, through him let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have. For such sacrifices are pleasing to God. He, said, he says now the way we sacrifice to God is by giving our praise. We, what we've already practiced today in our singing and our song. We lift that up to God and we offer that up to him. I like that way of doing it even better than the, the old way. But think about the sacrifice and what that means. Just think about someone in the Old Testament. Okay, they may not have very many possessions. They've got a lamb. And that's important to them. That's how they live. That's their sustenance. And they take that, and it seems ridiculous, but to take that and just have that sacrifice and offer it up to God, it doesn't make much sense. Well, it looks that way too. As we're here in a little bit, we're going to be giving money. We're going to be giving our resources back to God. And it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Why would we do that? Why would we take part of our paycheck and give that away? But it's because we're so grateful. We're so thankful. And we trust God. And we know God will supply our needs according to his riches in glory. And we did that a couple weeks ago. We, we took up an offering for Jean, or for Jean, <laughs> for the church that they needed in Haiti. They needed a tent because it's the, the rainy season. They didn't have a place to meet in. And so we took up an offering. And remember, before that, we had the garage sale. And Pastor Kel that morning, he told everyone that, hey, we made $1,900. We need $3,000 in order to get the, the tent that they need for Haiti. And so we asked for, for a little bit more for donations. Well, that, that means we need 1,100 more dollars, right? My math is correct. Okay, so they counted the money. They came to me and they said, we received this morning $1,100 in the offering. So we had the exact amount, $3,000. Yeah, praise the Lord for that. And so John called the guys in Haiti and he told them about it and they were just so excited that we're going to be able to bless them with that. So they're going to have their, uh, their tent, they're going to have their, their covering, they're going to be able to meet there and to praise the Lord. And so this is a way that we give. We give sacrificially, we give with thanksgiving. It's a joy to give, it's a pleasure to give, it's fun to give, and it's a privilege to give. This is what um, they did in the Old Testament. During the, uh, the Feast of Weeks, God told them to celebrate the Feast of Weeks. That's seven weeks after Passover. And let's look at Deuteronomy 16, 10 through 11. It says this, Then you shall keep the Feast of Weeks to the Lord your God with the tribute of a freewill offering from your hand, which you shall give as the Lord your God blesses you. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God, you and your son and your daughter, your male servant, and your female servant, the Levite who is within your towns, the sojourner, the fatherless, the widow who are among you at the place that the Lord your God will choose to make his name dwell there. And so you say we're gonna, you need to have this, this offering, give it willingly. And he brings everyone together to celebrate this together. And this is uh, Pentecost now in the New Testament and where the Holy Spirit came to us and now indwells us and fills us. 
And so they had this, this offering, and they had this, this banquet. And we had a banquet last week. Anyone enjoy the banquet that was there at the banquet last week? Yeah, it was great. Let's see that, that picture. Yeah, so we had a great time. We celebrated. We thanked God. We sang. We praised Him. And we just lifted up our offerings to Him. And it was a great and wonderful time. So it's just important for us to do that. And when we do this, we, we want to do this with everyone. You know, it said your son and your daughter. And so today, in a couple of minutes, we're going to have our, our young folks come forward. They're going to be the first ones to be able to contribute to the Building to Grow campaign. And they're going to come down here in a moment. And this is also like what David did back in 1 Chronicles 29 when he was getting, raising money for the, the building of the temple, he, he prayed this prayer. He said this, And now we thank you, our God, and praise your glorious name. But who am I, and what is my people, that we should be able to thus to offer willingly? For all things come from you, and of your own we have given you. For we are strangers before you, and so, sojourners as all our fathers were. Our days on earth are like a shadow, and there is no abiding. O Lord, our God, all this abundance that we have provided for building you a house for your holy name comes from you in your hand and is all your own. You see, they gave willingly. They didn't give because they were forced into it. They didn't give because, you know, they had to. They, they gave because they wanted to. They gave because it was a joy to give. They cheerfully gave. They gave hilariously, as it talks about in 2 Corinthians. They gave with a heart that just wanted to give back to God. And that's what we're going to do this morning when we take up this special offering. Uh, so we're going to actually have two offerings today. First time we've ever done this. And uh, it'll be a long time before we do it again. But let's, let's do that now. Let's, uh, let's have the kids come on up. And I'm going to call Mike Anderson up. And he's going to say a prayer, and then we're, uh, we're going to have uh, the, the children then hand out the baskets this morning, and we'll put our cards in. And this is just going to be for the Building to Grow offering, and then at the end of the service, we'll take up our, our regular offering. So they're going to go put their, their money in here. All right, before Mike prays, let's, let's give him a round of applause for, for doing that. Um. All right. Okay, let's pray together. Our Father, we praise you as our eternal God. Yours is the power and the glory and victory. It's your majesty that we worship today. We adore you today as the one who is in control of everything. You are the ruler of us, all mankind. Lord, we're here on this earth for just a moment, yet today you're allowing us the opportunity to impact eternity. Amen. Everything is yours, Lord. Everything in the universe. Everything in our hands. We only, as David prayed, give you back what you gave us. We know, Father, that you enjoy watching your children do the right things out of the right heart. And so we offer these gifts to you willingly and joyously. We ask that our giving today would show the world around us that we're like you. We ask that our giving today would amplify our love and obedience toward you. And we joyously dedicate this offering to you, our loving Father. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray this. Amen. Amen.
was exciting to see the young people come forward this morning and take part in this and see their hearts are in this too. And if you, if you haven't decided yet and you need a little more time, you just take your card with you, pray about it, think about it. You can send uh, Lauren an email at office at Oak Creek Bible this week and, and give, it, give her your, uh, your numbers for your, your commitment. So what an awesome day it is to give thanks to him. And we just want to go with one more, one more way to share our thanksgiving. That's by sharing a testimony. Look at, a Zeke, at Isaiah chapter 12, verse 4. It says this, it says, And you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, and proclaim that his name is exalted. If you go back to Isaiah chapter 11, the prophet Isaiah, this is before Christ, is looking ahead to the time when the lion will lie down with the lamb, when the child will reach into the, the cobra's hole and not get bit, and when everything will be at peace and there will be joy. And, and he follows up in, here in chapter 12 about giving thanks and giving a testimony and talking about his greatness and his great deeds. And so a testimony is not what lawyers do, it's what the witness does. The witness shares what they have seen, what they have experienced, and gives a testimony of what their experience has been. And so that's what we do with our own lives. We share with other people the testimony of what God has done in our lives and how he has helped us. Like earlier, I shared the story about my wife and uh, my mother-in-law and my neighbor and how God answered, and that's just, example of a testimony of God's work in our lives. And so let's look at Deuteronomy 4 9. It talks about this some more. Only take care and keep your soul diligently lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen and lest they depart from all your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. He says you need to remember you need to go back and talk about the things that God has done and remind yourself and remind others and remind your children and your grandchildren about how great God is and how he has worked in your life. And so it's very, very important for us to give testimonies to other people, to write these things down and to share these things with, other, with others. And it's been shown, you know, medically that the more grateful, the more thankful we are, the better our, our own health is. So there's even a side benefit. But our main focus is that we've got to give glory and give thanks to him by sharing our testimonies. Look at Colossians 3.17. It says, In whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So giving thanks in every aspect of our lives, in word and in deed. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. And so, all of our lives, we need to give thanks. It doesn't mean we're thankful for everything, but in everything, we give thanks because God is there and he is doing great things. And so I want us to, to watch these next two testimonies on video about how God has blessed these folks um, at Oak Creek and what he has done. So we're going to listen to Mac and Sarah Gallagher, and then we're going to listen to Garrett Rogers after that. Hi, we're the Gallaghers, and we were asked to say what we were most thankful for about Oak Creek. Those of you who know us know that we travel a lot, and we've been to many different churches in a lot of different states. And Oak Creek has by far been the most uh, welcoming church that we've ever been to. Yeah, because we travel so much, um, going to a new place is always a little bit daunting. You don't know um, if you're going to have friends or just what the outcome of the move is going to be. But coming here, immediately we were welcomed in. Uh, we were brought into the fold, it feels like. Just asked to join a small group, asked to be involved, and we just welcomed that so much. So we're very thankful for the friendships we've made, for the community that is here. For people that we don't even know in the church, but um, they're familiar, uh, that does a lot for us in our life on the road. And those are the things that we are thankful for about Oak Creek. One thing I'm thankful for about Oak Creek is you, the person or people watching this video. Uh, honestly, before coming to Oak Creek, I searched uh, a lot of churches 
and I can without a doubt say that this is truly a family at this church. The people here are genuine and they truly care uh, about you or about your family or about others and that reflects Christ and Oak Creek truly reflects Christ and the people here and I mean that's our mission is just we need to grow Christians and keep spreading the word and honestly this is a family. I've, I've grown to see this as a family and they do care about each other. When they ask how was your day, how was your week, they truly want to know how your week was and that's something that's rare. I know that sounds kind of funny but to go to a church that truly cares, these people aren't superficial here and for that I'm thankful and I just want to say this Thanksgiving holiday, uh, let's go out and show Christ together in, in our lives and how we treat others and uh, this church is a family so thank you Oak Creek for that. And we're very thankful that uh, the train was not coming down the tracks at that moment. So I'm very grateful for that too. So it's so good to be thankful, our whole lives to be thankful. And I know that some of you kind of feel like maybe right now that you're, you're in a prison of sorts. You're in a prison of maybe of emotional pain, of financial pain, of relational pain, of different things that have happened in your life and you feel like you're trapped inside this this prison but I want to share with you a story that shows that giving thanks is the way to get out of that that prison and it's a story found in the Bible in Acts chapter 16 Paul and Silas who are spreading the good news and spreading the gospel and we read Paul earlier in, in Philippians and and here he is in prison he's just been beaten with rods Paul and Silas. So their backs are beaten and shredded and torn to pieces and they're there in the prison and it's midnight. Now I don't know anyone who's in their right mind that's singing at midnight, but they're singing at midnight. Okay, it must be the Holy Spirit has just grabbed the whole of them even with the pain from the, the whipping that they've taken on their backs. They're praying and praising God, singing thanks to Him at midnight and so then the whole prison starts to shake. There's an earthquake and the chains come off the prisoners and uh, the, the prison guard, he's about ready to kill himself because he, he knows it, that probably the prisoners have gone out of the prison and he's going to die for that. But Paul says to them, no. No, don't kill yourself. Everyone's here. Everything's fine. And so he says to Paul, he says, what must I do to be saved? I mean, obviously, you've got the true God, and I need him. How do I be, be saved? And Paul said to them, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. And what a great day that was for the jailer and his household to be saved and to be baptized and to see God do such a great work. But here was Paul in prison and in so much pain. But what does he do? He gives thanks. He praises God. He thinks of all the good things that he has in Christ and all that God has done for him. And he praises him in song and in thanks. And that's what we can do. So if you're here this morning and you've, you're in a prison, you don't know how to get out, the answer is give thanks. Give thanks to him. And that's the way our lives need to be every day. So let's do that this week. Let's give thanks. Let's give thanks to him by singing by praying, by giving back to him and giving to others. And let's share testimonies of what God has done in our lives. Let's pray. Lord, we are, we're so, so grateful.